You have a dab of YouTube. What's up, boys and girls? It's your boy Zockstar. Once again, coming at you with an emergency vlog. That's right, guys. Uh, this is a bit of a bit of an update to what's happening over there in the Philippines with this uh, Taal volcano, the eruption. Um, I've noticed a lot of videos out there just regurgitating everyone else's videos, clickbait photos, and things like that. No one's really talking about anything really important. Um, the main thing you need to do is follow the instructions of the emergency um, response teams. Keep listening to them, keep watching the TV, radio, that's, the, that's your best bet. Don't worry about YouTube, but if you're on YouTube and you want to know what to do to be able to survive properly and to make sure you're, you, yourself and your family handle the situation a little bit better, then I've got some good tips for you. Um, Hopefully, they'll make your life a little bit easier. So, I'm going to tell you my hot tips to survive this volcanic ash from the Ta'al volcano in the Philippines. Stay tuned, and I'll tell you how. So welcome back. Um, yeah, I've been watching the uh, news over here in Australia. Uh, we have our own situation here. Australia is burning. Uh, serious problems here with the fire and that, and it doesn't look like it's getting any better. Uh, we have our own situation today where it's we, you can't see nothing. The, the, the cloud, the, the smoke from the from the fires has come down into Victoria and it's blanketing the whole the whole state, and it's getting. To almost emergency situations here. Today I was recorded as being the most polluted day in the world, in Victoria, all over the world. So, as you probably are already aware of, it's pretty bad down here. And it looks like it's getting pretty bad up there in the Philippines, uh, near Batanga. So, these are my sort of tips that I thought I'd share with you guys to help you guys get through this. Um, hope it helps. Um, I've written down a few little um, tips, so uh, let's get straight into it. Um, the number one main tip for you guys to be following is follow the instructions from the emergency officials. They're the ones that have the main people on the ground, they have the equipment, they have the resources, they know what's going on and they're going to be able to tell you what to do, when to do it. If you've been told to evacuate, get the out of there. Seriously guys, get out. I noticed a few videos with this guy still fishing along the lake there. Gargul talaga. Really, get out. You need to get the F out of that area immediately because if that explodes, you guys just don't understand the, the, seriousness, the seriousness of this volcano. It's a volcano sitting in a lake and that lake is a volcano itself. If that blows up, it, you have no idea. It could blow half the Philippines to pieces. So heed their warnings. Okay, the second tip is to get yourself one of those N95 respiratory masks. They're also known as the P2 or the FFP2 or the DZ2 mask in other parts of the world. So if you can get one of them, get it ASAP. Um, they do come in smaller sizes for children because the adult size ones, they, they'll sort of fit around your face here and a child has a smaller face, they might not seal properly around there. So if you can, get one of those for yourself and your children and grab a couple. They're not, you can't use them for five, six days. They've got to be replaced because they filter out the small particles and with volcanic ash, you get particles down to 2.5 microns, which is... It's smaller than your hair. It's like talcum powder. After a while, they will block up and you'll find that you're struggling to breathe because it's actually blocked. So if you can, grab a box if, if it's possible. Um, you'll get some... They're, they're certified. A 3M is certified mask. That's what they're designed for, to, to, get, to hold, to keep that small particles out of your lungs. If you've got respiratory problems, a normal plain dust mask isn't going to do it. Um, but worst case scenario, if you can't get anything, then grab yourself just a normal 
they call them a nuisance mask, it's just a normal dust mask. That should be able to help you out, but you need to stay indoors. Um, as a last resort, you can use, um, you can improvise. You can get yourself a t-shirt, rip your t-shirt, put it over your, over your face, you know, wrap yourself up. Um, you can use other things like, um, you can use a, fem like a, a bra, a bra, the cup for the bra, you can use that. If all else fails, they're the sort of things that you can use. Improv improvise. I've seen a lot of guys when I was when I was living in the Philippines, the motorcycle riders, they've got their own little sort of like a bandana. Anything to just keep the dust out of your mask. You don't really need to be, if they're sold out of these masks and you can't get them, don't panic. That's the main thing, do not panic. If you can't get them and you, you're struggling, t-shirt, rip t-shirt around around your nose and you, you can sort of seal it with your with your fingers and that if it gets really bad um, worst case scenario you can actually wet the mask that way as the dust is making its way through the the, the, the cotton it'll actually stick to the wet mask but just please remember after a while you'll see a build up of dirt and ash just reposition it and keep repositioning repositioning it until You've used up the whole T-shirt. Throw it away. Grab another one. You got. I'm sure you guys have a lot of T-shirts. Um, a scarf, head scarf, or just a normal scarf. Cover it. You, you know what I'm. You know what I'm saying. Improvise. Use your own imagination. Anything, but not like a woolen scarf where you can actually see light through it. It has to be like a fine material that's actually going to stop small particles passing through and into your lungs. Um, that's about it for the your safety precautions. Um, if you well, there's a couple more. Um, if you got goggles like the scuba goggles or even like those smaller swimming goggles or the motorcycle goggles, any sort of goggle that actually seals around your eye, you can use those if you got them. That way you don't get that gas, the ash actually going into your eyes. Um, scuba diving, any of those sort of water sport um, goggles will actually do. Um, another thing to make sure, most most of these places might have like a bit of a, a brown out, uh, make sure you've got a flashlight, make sure you've got batteries for the flashlight and if possible, um, make sure you've got like a little radio, battery powered radio to continually monitor the news and keep updated on what's going on. Uh, also, take necessary medication. If you've been evacuated to evacuation centre, or something like that take the medicine with you for at least a week week's worth or if you've got two or three make sure you got that as well because you don't know how long this is going to last hopefully it's just going to blow over in the next couple of days and everything will be back back to normal fingers crossed um, if you're if you actually if you can't evacuate you, do, you have nowhere to go make sure you got plenty of water and a bit of bit of food supply um, now some sort of home safety tips um, Try to stay indoors if possible. Only if, if you need to go somewhere, it's an emergency. And like I said previously, make sure you've got your mask on, your goggles, your protective clothing. Um, but that's if you only if it's an emergency. Otherwise, if it's not an emergency, stay home, stay indoors. Uh, one thing to do also, if you're starting to get that ash cloud over, seal up all your windows, all all openings, doors, if possible. Um, I know some of the houses in the Philippines, they don't have sliding windows, they, they're not sealable, they've got the, 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 the slats. Um, if you can, get some curtains and try and seal around the curtains, with, even with some masking tape. Just get a nice seal around there to stop that ash coming through to the windows. Um, roll up some wet towels like in big like snakes and put them up against the bottom of the door to stop that dust because when the dust falls it hits the ground and sort of blows around like in like little eddy currents and when it's coming down that's where it's going to come in through the bottom seal of the door so make sure that's all sealed up um, to prevent any of the um, ash dust coming inside to your house um, if you have um, not sure if you have them there. We have uh, recirculating, not recirculating. We have um, air coolers that pull the air out of the the air and blow it into the house. And you've got to have windows to blow that out. If you have them, turn them off because you're just going to be blocking up your filters inside the actual air unit. 
Um, if you don't have those and you have air conditioners, set them to the recic uh, recirculating, so it's just recirculating the air inside the room. Try to uh, turn off the air that's coming into the into the building, that way you're not getting any polluted air particles coming into the um, into your building. If you have pets, bring them inside immediately. If you're suffering from respiratory problem, your pets will be as well. Uh, cats, dogs, I know it's going to be hard to bring in cows, pigs, chickens and that. I mean, if you've got a fighting chicken, bring that in as well. Um, continue to monitor news and radio for any new information. That's that's important. You need to be updated on what's going on with these emergency situations. Um, the wind could change and one area that was in trouble today might be safe tomorrow, but the area that was safe today will be in trouble tomorrow, if you know what I mean. So don't turn the radio off. Keep on, the, keep on these news channels. They've got live feeds going continuously. Stay in touch with the actual updates. Um, try not to stay in low-lying areas. If you're from the country somewhere, in, you know, in the hilly areas, don't get down into the lower valleys. Try and sort of get up into the higher valleys because this, the ash and the clouds will make its way down into the lower-lying areas. Don't go too high because when the smoke goes up and it gets blown across, you might be affected if you're up too high. Um, so that's about it for now. Um, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, Another important thing, do not panic. When you panic, you lose your concentration, you don't know what you're doing, you're not listening to the, to the media, you're not following instructions, do not panic. Stay calm, be relaxed, and fingers crossed, God will look after everything. This, I believe, is just a bit of, a, bit of an angry, angry, angry uh, rumble. Uh, my wife, she's telling me last week, that guy from um, Flying Kel, he was swimming inside the Tal Taal volcano, and my wife said, "The volcano is angry. He's angry at this guy and his girlfriend for going in for a swim." So, I don't know. You can believe that or not. I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, continue to listen to your authoritative advice, and hopefully everything will be okay. Hope these tips. Hope these tips help. Um, my thoughts and prayers are with you all, from myself and my wife. Um, Stay safe, be good, God bless, and peace out.